they hail from around the globe. And though separated by oceans, they gather in the virtual world for reasons as varied as their locales. Whether it's a defending champion looking to retain his title, a new and eager hopeful driving for recognition, or a legend prepared to recapture past glory, in the end, the one goal they all share is to win. But when naming a victor, only one driver's name can be etched into the record books. You're watching the Hoisingfeld MX-5 World Tour. During its early years, Summit Point Motorsports Park hosted numerous SCCA events. Among the drivers, racing in his now familiar Datsun 510 was a superstar, not from his success on the track, but from his accomplishments on the silver screen. Today, the Heusenfeld MX-5 World Tour celebrates the life of a great actor and respected race car driver presented by Title Influence. It is the Paul Newman Memorial from Summit Point. Hello and welcome to the Global Sim Racing Channel and the Title Influence Countdown to Green. It's round three of 13 on the MX-5 World Tour Season 15 schedule and GSRC will bring you all the action from Green Flag to Victory Donuts live as it happens. But first, as cyberspace flows into your place, we'll bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts you'll need to fully appreciate the Paul Newman Memorial from Summit Point that will immediately follow as we count down to green. And here to do all of that is yours truly, Bill Soupzon, joined by someone I think you viewers are really going to enjoy, the fan belt, Johan Vandenville. The hardest working man in sim race broadcasting, Joe Peak, is our director, armed with cameras located, aimed, zoomed, and focused by GSRC's camera guru, Dougie Beard. While Summit Point has been the traditional venue for the always ridiculous MWT Demolition Derby. The last time the tour raced here for points was January of 2016, the opening round of season 11, when the Buckeye Bullet John Deuce Allen beat Robert Hartley to the checkered flag. So since it's been a while, let me reintroduce my partner, Johan Vandebelt, to tell us about today's race course. Hey there, Bill. Now, before we talk about the track, a little bit something different. Let before I talk about the track, remind all the viewers that almost everything on the countdown to green is brought to you courtesy of Tidal Influence. Tidal Influence, an ecological consulting firm based in Long Beach, California, that restores wetlands, saves and studies endangered species, and educates children about our environment. For more information, go to their website at www. The title influence now about today's battlegrounds you talked about the bill summit point it's located on the other side of the united states in jefferson country west virginia only two hours away from washington dc the track was built in 1969 and 1970 and is officially called summit point motorsports park being a track for amateur racing at first, some well-known championships have visited the Virginian tarmac in the years to follow, like the SCCA Transam Series and IMSA. Currently, the circuit is mostly known for the 12 hours at the point endurance race. Summit Point Motorsports Park hosts four different tracks, but the drivers will face the main layout tonight. This turn, 10 turn and 3.2 kilometers track has two phases, so to speak. On one hand, it features an almost one kilometer long straight, roughly 30% of the entire track and some very fast corners where drivers have to go all out to maintain momentum in their masters. On the other hand, Summit Point features a tight, small and slow carousel section where the tires scream bloody murder as drivers hug the ideal line. As it is one of the free tracks in iRacing, I will bet good money on the fact that all drivers tonight have done their fa fair share of laps around Summit Point. It's a track that is easy to drive, with walls that are far away in some friendly runoff areas. But it's also difficult to master, as slippery grass and hungry gravel banks are always just an inch away. To be fast, you have to show iron determination. And to give you viewers an idea of how that looks like, we jump aboard our GSSC MX-5 for a lap around Summit Point. All right, we're in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Summit Point. Coming down the front stretch, turn one will definitely be the best place to pass on the whole track. 
It's got the longest straight, so the draft will come into play, and then you hit one of the slowest corners. You really won't find any more ideal conditions anywhere else on the circuit. But if you're under attack and defend on the inside, watch out for the over-under on the exit of the corner. The good news is, turn 3 is the opposite direction, so even if your opponent gets underneath you, since this turn switches them to the outside, they'll probably need to completely clear you to get the pass done. Watch out for the crest on the exit though, since it'll be easy for the car to push out into the gravel. Then there's the scary turn 4, which will need a little lift to keep you on the proper racing line. This leads directly into the braking for 5, which is sometimes jokingly called yard sale corner for how often accidents happen here. But now we start into the technical back half of the course with the carousel. It's going to be pretty much single file through here, but your run off of it can make a big difference in your lap time. If you get it just right, the S's of 8 and 9 are flat out, and you won't need the lift until the final corner. But despite the high speeds you'll reach coming up to 10, this is a surprisingly fast sweeper with very little braking. That makes overtakes pretty uncommon on entry. Because it leads back onto the front stretch, it's much more important to ensure you set yourself up for a good run off the exit. This should keep you safer from attack into the first corner. But if you kept it together, you've now hopefully finished a lap around Summit Point. Jake Sperry might not be here today, but at least we can be comforted by the familiar vocal resonance of Joe Peake talking us around a lap at Summit Point. And now, let me take you a lap around the point standings after two events. It has been assigned seating, or in this case, assigned standing when it comes to the podium so far this season. Sonny Ketchin has won twice. The Roland Estonian Aeronum has finished second twice. And Robert Hartley, you guessed it, has finished third in both of his races. And the sequence almost continued with Travis Swinky and Gene Fittis, each with a fourth and a fifth. Only the bonus points for Swecky being a bit cleaner keeps those drivers from being tied. And I must point out that the Kiwi, uh, Fittis, has been the surprise all season long as he sits in fifth. Let's move to the AM Driver Championship. After a dismal first effort, England's Anwar Burrell Smith came home seventh last round to rocket into the lead. All the other AM drivers were very orderly, dropping one spot each to make room for the new leader. Adam McNally is only a point out of first and would be leading the class if not for Burrell Smith's advantage in the miles per incident bonus points. It's all England up top as Neil Bamber sits third. Steven Van Ofstrel has home track advantage today. And Johan, we see our first Dutchman as your country mate, Joop the Loop Willemsen, sits fifth, 17th overall in the standings. Yeah, we'll keep an eye today on how Joop is doing this race in season 15 of the Heusenfeld MWT. Season 15, where Sonny Kanshin is looking to become the fourth time champion, the first fourth time champion of the series. And with two victories so far, he's surely trying to do that. The summit, race, uh, summit Point race tonight will be round three of 13 races in which there are no dropped races. So anything that happens on the track matters. Consistency will be key in this championship. Now, drivers do get the benefit of free no-show compensations. That means that if the driver misses a race, he or she is compensated with a percentage of the driver average finishing position. So it doesn't hurt that much missing a race but it's still better to show up every time and the setups tonight they're open they will give an advantage to the drivers who can afford to invest some practice time even though the setup is not that big of a, of a factor here in the mx5 the race distance is 31 laps today that means that we have a familiar one pit stop for fuel and we also have no incident gap to worry about. Drivers don't have to worry about being DQ'd when they go through the gaffer of, uh, of turn three, but there are valuable bonus points for having the best miles per incident rating. Sue pointed out how those already affected the point standings, and those will surely be affected today. Yeah, they track those all season long, and it's really worth one race at the end of the season where you stand on that, on that uh, miles per incident chart. If you're sitting on top, basically you get credit as if you won a race. And if you're sitting way at the bottom, it's like you finished last in a race. Now, Johan, will the weather allow some of our always attractive two-dimensional fans to shed a few layers of clothing or do they need to stay covered up? 
I mean, I don't know about you, Bill, but I already took my sweater off for this race tonight. <laughs> this is a beautiful clear sky with 84 degrees Fahrenheit uh, air temperature and a staggering 111 degrees Fahrenheit uh, track temperature. So there's, there's surely a nice bit of temperature there for the early spring race in Virginia. There's an eastern wind around 12 MPA coming, uh, coming from the east and uh, around 51% uh, humidity. So the fans will be comfortable, 111 degrees Fahrenheit though. Might be a little bit warm, maybe traction might be a bit of an issue. You know these MX-5s. Yeah, that actually might be. We talked about a little bit before we went on air, that, that infield section, that carousel section, um, drivers really have to be completely on edge there. They have to like make the tires squeal and scream as much as they can. So it might be that overheating the tires is something that happens way more quickly than they perhaps have practiced with. Qualifying underway right now. No surprise to see Aero Num sitting at the top of the chart. But we have a new driver here, Artem Koralski, currently sitting second in the time. We've watched him run with the guys up front early on in the first couple races. He runs strong early, Johan, but uh, then it takes a while to get used to the pit stops. Uh, he'll fall off behind. Hopefully, he can get that figured out. Hopefully, yeah, but like you say bill it's so close looking at the qualifying standings at the moment artem is only three hundredths of a second behind the estonian aero known and behind that in p3 gene fittis is only five hundredths behind aero known so the top three are actually covered by half a tenth really close uh behind them the amateur drivers of burial smith and van Opstel are also close by so yeah this this top five currently as qualifying looks bill surely looks like a cracker Talk about a few names here of drivers who have been naughty. Not sure if all of these or any of these guys are actually here today. Jacob Toss and Steve Clays. They'll need to serve a mandatory stop and go penalty if they're in the race. Cesar Rizzo and Chris Danes will also need to just have a pass through penalty. The IRT charts those and it's pretty much like a driving record. They keep you over the your last eight races and eventually it'll clear if you behave. We're looking there. Now we go over to Robert Willinga. Robert sitting in 29th. Field was a little bit smaller than, than usual, but still very healthy. About 30 cars here today. Yeah, and especially for a small track like, like Summit. Like last time around we were at Silverstone and we had 50 drivers and on a huge track like Silverstone, that's kind of what you need. But on a small tra track like this, it might actually be worse to have that many drivers because traffic would be a huge factor and you'll probably see less heavy battles because drivers have to pass all the cars and there's more uh, external factors. So I'm quite happy, Bill, that there's actually around 30 drivers today because I think that the battle uh, will surely be a lot tighter because of that. Yeah, 50 drivers at Silverstone would be like 20 drivers here. This 30 drivers, is, that's still pretty large for the size of this track. And what that means is that it, that brings into pit strategy a lot too. We talked about the pit stops. Uh, usually when you're running on a big track, you can do whatever you like. But here, if you have lap traffic that you have to deal with, sometimes that can affect when the leaders want to come in or where the leaders come out even, Johan. Yeah, especially. So that will be a, a good thing to keep in mind today, how you are going to plan your pit stop. Are you going to maybe choose to, to, to try and undergut on your rifles? Are you going to try to stay in the draft of other people? Are you going to keep an eye on the, on the, on the traffic? And are you going to try to predict where the traffic will be so you have a clean air? Like you said, Bill, because this is such a small track compared to Silverstone, Man, th those are a lot of extra factors. People like Ironome, Artem Korolski, and Gene Fittis have to have to keep in mind today. Just a little up close and personal on Artem Korolski. You may wonder where he's from. Well, actually, he says he's from the Ukraine, so that's good to see an Eastern European driver racing with us here. A little later than it is for a lot of these drivers. Looking at the roll in Estonia now. While he is on pole, Johan talked about it. My goodness, he's only three one hundredths of a second faster than Korolski. Really, Gene Fittis right in the mix, too. I mean, the 120.5 for all these guys. 
Yeah, it's really close, and I'm taking a look down the standings a little bit further, Soup. If you look at the difference between P5 and P6, uh, Richard Wirth and Stephen van Opstel have exactly the same time, a 127-17. Talking about close racing, that's surely promising, because they're only three hundredths of a second in front of Bas Slop, uh, who's currently EP in P7 in the, in the qualifying standings. It's really close looking so far. Qualifying just about done, and I forgot since Jake is here that I have a plug to read, so maybe we can bring up that graphic now. And it's, of course, I got to talk about the Hoisingfield starting grid. With qualifying almost done, it's time for the Hoisingfield starting grid. Remember, Hoisingfield offers a broad array of products and services, including advanced vehicle simulation software and hardware, and sponsors on practically every major team in sim racing today. If you're looking for an edge in racing, get in touch today at hoisingveld.com. Okay, all the business is out of the way. Now let's get to what you want to know. Conspicuous by his absence is Sonny Kenshin, not here today. So a good opportunity for Arrow Num to pick up a win. Artem Kurowski is going to flank him on row one. Gene Fittis and another top amateur, Anwar's Burrell Smiths make up row two. Row three is Richard Wirth and Steven Van Ostro. Boslav and Marcello Pizan, the Italian driver, in eighth. Marco Dirix and the Bay State Hammer, Tom Ratchie, in tenth. Johan? I'll go through the next 10 a little bit quicker. Jason Cooper in P11 in front of Bjorn De Force. Nick Thiessen in 13th next to Jordi Fieke. Robert Wielenga in P15 next to Lorne Murray. Derek Holland in 17th in front of Arjan Schepers. Robert Witte is in 19th in front of Joop Willemsen. P5 in the amateur class and P20 on the grid. Max Wright and Raul Guaz make up Blackjack and Double Duck Spot. Franz Janssen and Trip Smith behind them. Adam McNally, Peter Van Gool. Old Joe McDonald in 29th, Yeroom Urson in the 30th position, and Kip Stevens in 27th. The last five drivers didn't put in qualifying times. We got him through. The GSRC commentator's bonus will be handed out to Johan and myself for getting through the entire field before they go green. Now we can put our attention back up front to Errol Num. He does not have his biggest rival here next to him, but he has an unknown of Kurowski sitting right behind him, staggered just off to his left. Now, one thing that will be there to keep in mind is that long straight we talked about, a long way to go for turn one. The start is really important today. Some of these drivers are so technical, they actually practice the braking part, the braking mark on the opening lap because they won't be at full speed when they get down to one. You can hear the engine start to harmonize. You know what to do. Gather at the chicken stick, cover me on the cows because the horses are out of the barn. And one horse was a really good start was the Ukraine driver Artem Kurowski. He's right on the back of Aeronum as he starts to gain. Going down into one, he'll be on the outside. The rest of them cycle through two by two. That's Fittis on the inside. A nice move by the driver. That's Richard Worth Money doing a good job up into fourth with the other rookie. Raul Smith behind him. They go through now in sixth position. It is Van Ostrel. Everybody single file. They negotiate through Wagon Ben. Now down the chute. The leaders head in towards five. They get that breaking zone done. It, it's still numb up in front. Borowski behind them. Fittis, Worth, and Smith, your top five drivers single file all the way through it looks to be clean all the way back through the field so far so good as the field works through the technical section now the leaders are out of nine heading toward paddock ben that is corner number 10 so far so good everybody seems to remain on the track coming around is the rolling estonian arrow numb full throttle now let's see if karowski is going to make a move on him on the first lap he's about two car lanes back he's in the toe they come across the start finish line right there. That shows you how far down from the final corner that start finish line is. Plenty of time to snake somebody at the end. Kurowski does not make a move. Look at the run that the Kiwi gets. Fittis almost gets in the back of the Ukraine driver, but so far so good as Fittis hangs on to third. Worth and Smith in a battle. Smith trying to find any way around as they head towards the wagon wheel. That's the left-hander. Plenty of runoff room. 
Yeah, and you could see there just how much draft these cars generate on that long straight that we talked about earlier, because Gene Fenders was quite a way back going out of the last corner, but he almost took Artem Kurowski out in turn one. They got so close. A uh, really impressive drive from Gene Fitters there. He stays in P3, however, there's a single foul as we speak going for yard sale corner. This is not really an overtaking position, so they probably will try to take as, as good as line through the carousel here and set himself up for an overtake in the last corner pit. The lead train goes all the way back to 10th with Nick Thiessen trying to hang on to the back. Here's what Errol Numb will try to do. He'll try to run up in front and try to thin the train as he can. It's a strategy, Johan, that you are very familiar with in the Absolute Beginner League when he races with you guys in the Skippy. If he can't thin the train, then he'll fall back a little bit. Exactly, but looking at the people behind him, if you fall back here, you don't know how far you're going to fall back. And it might actually be dangerous to be uh, uh, falling back a little bit because you don't know what the people in front of you will do. So you're not saving fuel, but it might be a good idea to stay in front because of that. Ironome is going to lose a place, however, it seems like to Artem Karolski, who tries a move into turn one. He makes him, though, a little bit of a dive bomb, it seems like. But he gets a good traction going out of the corner, and Gene Fittis seems to go with him going on the outside of turn three, Bill. Errol Numb probably a little bit apprehensive with Kurowski, doesn't know him that well. He knows that he's fast, but hasn't raced with him a lot. Probably thought, okay, if you want to go, take it. The race is still young. Ten drivers still in the retrain. Let's quickly highlight some drivers a little farther back. There is a battle for 11th. These are the first two guys off the train. This is the Bay State Hammer, Tom Ratchie, being chased by Jason Cooper. And now I hear some contact. Let's go to, oh, it's just a little bump. It was uh, Marco Dirix just got into the back of Marcelo Pajan. Just a little, hello. Everything seems to be okay. It's always good to say hi to each other early in the race so you can basically fuel each other out and, uh, and prepare yourself for the race to come. Now one thing I see when the drivers are going onto the main straight, if you look a little bit forward, is Hero Gnome isn't that close as Artem was to him a few laps ago. It's a, a gap of a few tenths, four tenths as we speak, and Gene Fittis is a little bit closer to Hero Gnome than Hero Gnome is to the leader. Team Fittis gets close, but he is not trying a move, however. Now, I don't know exactly what Ira is doing. He might actually just think like, oh, I don't need to be on this tail. If we just drive in each other's draft, we can maybe create a gap to some of the people behind us, break away with this little top group that we uh, that we currently have in front of the field, and basically make sure that if, uh, if the battling starts and I fall back a little bit, I don't fall back too far. Remember, Kurowski was fast, though. We talked about the interval. And there we go, we're looking at Nick Thyssen. Nick had himself an incident here that our director has found. I'll watch it for the first time with you fans. Nick was running in 10th. Boy, I love that Dougie Beard camera shot when they come at you. Oh, he got, look at that, Johan, he got those right sides off in the grass. Woo! But look at that car control because he, he gets loose, he loses time, he loses position, but he saves it. Now I've been this I've done this track enough times in the rookies that most people that have a moment in that corner like that, they don't keep the wall, car straight, they end up in the wall. So really good car control from Nick there to keep it in a straight line and uh, really yeah, limit the damage, so to speak. We talked to you about those guys that were battling back there for 11th, and that, of course, was was Rath, Jay, and, and Cooper. Well, now Thyssen falls in behind them, so they vulture a spot. Interesting line that time. Maybe we'll watch it next time from the leader. He took a very defensive line out of Paddock Bend, down into the first corner, hugging the right side. Did not want to let Arrow get underneath him. We're looking currently on board of Artem, looking back to Aero Gnome and Gene Fittis. And I think that Artem just wants track position at this moment. Maybe he doesn't, you mentioned of course that he was new, Bill. Uh, maybe he doesn't trust the guys around him that much. He just wants to be safe, better safe than sorry, and lead the pack. So he's at least sure that he's not into heavy battle. Now, looking back, you can see very well that there's a gap forming behind that black car. That's Marcelo Pagnan. He's currently in eighth place, and he's around one second in front of Marco Derricks. Marco Derricks is currently in ninth. And I think, Bill, that that's basically the cutoff point that we'll see today. Yep. So we've an eight car battle for the lead. It's currently staying in each other's drafts, trying to yeah, basically uh, form a, a little uh, top group, so to speak in the race, and I think as long as they stay in the draft, nothing is going to break them. And the man modern 
monitoring the length of that train as Errol Nunn. It was once 10, but Marco Derricks has fallen off, and of course, Thyssen had his problems. And, and now we're looking there at uh, Tom Ratchie, was able to get around, I guess, Lorne Murray. Lauren Murray down into 13th now as he's falling. We look back at Murray. Maybe we can give a little love back here to these guys. This is Murray being chased down by Jordy Fike. Jorn DeForsch in 15th. Adam McNally and Robert Linga. Yeah, especially what you say, these people are also having good fights. Um, you, of course, have like the, the top eight drivers driving away a little bit from the rest of the pack. But if I look backwards through the field, I see several packs of drivers staying with each other. And in these cars, on a track like this, having a little buddy that you can drive with, that you can drive with, that you can save fuel with, that you can maybe use to, you drive one lap, you drive the other lap uh, to, to increase your lap times, it actually might be very helpful. So good to see that there's some packs forming around there. And when we look at fifth position, that is Anwar Burrell Smith. He is our top amateur driver. Remember, there's two championships right now. He's having a great run for the amateur, but good, he is being pressured right now. Yeah, he's oh, being. That's it. He's, he's trying to get on Richard Wirth, is what he's trying to do. Yeah, look, look in front of them. You can see the car from Richard Wirth and look a little bit forward that the gap to Gene Fittis has increased dramatically. Uh, it's almost a second that's. Uh, one and a half seconds that these two are behind them. So they really have to stop fighting basically a little bit and, uh, and work their way back to the top top three drivers. Otherwise, they might disappear on the horizon. Boss Slob was in a battle and he went hard into the first corner. He's going to lose several positions. He falls back down now in the caboose of that eight car train. And Johan is right. Again, the train begins to thin a little bit. Richard Wirth got to do his very best to see if he can hang on to the back of Gene Fittis. Now I'm looking at the gap currently, it's 1.2 seconds that uh, Richard Wirth is behind Gene Fittis. Now, that means that he probably has a bit of draft going onto the straight, but that bit of draft is probably not enough because Gene Fittis is right on the gearbox of Aeronome, so his push, his momentum will be increased tenfold compared to Richard's. So, as they are uh, touching the last corner, I see one point something as well, so it seems like it's currently still around the same place. They really have to hurry up, Bill. Boy, you look at that. Here they are coming at you again. This is a great shot. Shows you what's going on. You can see the gap between the front three and the next five. You have one car with a little bit of connection problem there. Oh, it looks like maybe we might be iRacing might be having a bit of an issue. Let's quickly talk about uh, your leader, Artem Kowalski. He has been fast, but we talked about it a little bit. He's been able to run up front early, but when the pit stops happen, and he hasn't been able to get the the finish that he would expect from the speed that he has. This is his third race in this season. He might be in this series, might be getting the feel of it now. Yeah, he's surely showing the pace out there. The only thing that I'm thinking about, Bill, is that although he is leading Aeronome and Gene Fitness in the top three battle, he is not saving fuel. And I think that might be a big difference come, come pit stops when Aeronome and Gene Fitness will be able to make a way quicker stop and maybe leap from uh, the Ukrainian driver who's currently leading. I'm going to take it away from it and go down to 14th. I want to talk about the hard charger right now, and it's Adam McNally. McNally is already up 10 spots. He started 25th, is up to 15th, and working on the back of the Sheriff. This is Jordy Fike. Let's give these guys a little bit of love as the front guys are pretty well behaved. We'll stay on this one and see if Adam McNally can get the pass. Looks like he does. This is a passing zone that I think would be more worked, but it never really is in here as he gets it done into 10. You know, I guess it's kind of hard to make a pass there. It's, it's really hard and also because if you try a pass there, you basically set yourself up for a, a worse exit going onto the main straight and that will really kill your time because the main straight is such a big part. And you're talking about Adam McNally being a hard charger. I just took a look at his lap times. He's basically the same speed as Artem, Eero and Gene are. That's impressive mm -hmm. for a guy that started in 25th. Of course, he didn't qualify, but he's doing really good so far. I think it's a few tenths off, but if you factor in the draft that those top guys are having, I think that if Adam actually managed to qualify, he could be up there in the top eight or even top three battle. If you're new to the MX-5 World Tour, you might be thinking, well, what he needs is a yellow flag. Well, that's not going to happen here. We are green the whole way. Let's go back up to the leaders right now, because let's give credit to 
Richard Money Worth here as he's in fourth. He's beginning to close the gap back on Finnis. Now he did exactly what we were talking about, Bill. He closed the gap. He put the hammer down. And also, uh, Beryl Smith is someone you probably should uh, give a little bit of credit to because it's so tempting if you're that close behind the driver to just try a move before. Like, what, what does it matter? Well, he didn't try a move. He stayed behind him, made sure that Richard could enjoy the draft fully, could drive his normal lines, and he's almost caught up to Gene Fittis, who's actually trying a move yeah. now on Aeronom going over the start finish straight. Maybe Gene Fittis is thinking, I want to lead this race a little bit. Going side by side towards turn one, uh, Gene Fittis still on the outside, breaking a little bit later, but Aeronom has the track position, covers him, and that's really good for Richard Wirth because now. Those five drivers that were trailing top three have caught up. Fittis had a really good run out of the final corner. Numb felt it. He moved over, took that defensive line. Told the Kiwi if he was going to try to pass him, he's going to have to do it around the outside. He gave it an effort, didn't get it done. The front three guys running the same order they've been ever since Kurowski made the pass on Numb. Kurowski, though, not able to pull away, but... but uh, can, is Num still getting, Johan, is Num still getting a little gas saving here from being that far back? I think so, yeah. I think so because the, in the straight he can probably lift a little bit earlier and that, that will make a difference uh, at the end now. I, I do think that Artem is really quick though. Uh, but on the other hand, Eero is really smart. So I, I would love to see the, the fuel meters of both cars <laughs> because so we could see real time what is exactly happening and uh, if Eero is actually fuel saving or if he is just not able to, to pass the Ukrainian driver. The one driver in that lead pack of eight drivers is Bas Slop. Bas is currently in eighth place. Now, he's one of the drivers that I'm currently feeling for of using the draft slightly. He's around seven tenths behind Marcelo Pagnan. But that's enough to still have the draft. But if he doesn't catch up a little bit soon, he might actually lose it. Saying that he has a really good break in there in turn one and catches up a little bit. Bas Slop, a pro driver again. We talked about the two classes, the pros and the amateur. That started last season. As we look at this battle for fifth between one of those amateur drivers. Yeah, talking about those amateur drivers, Stephen from Upsal is trying his move on uh, Beryl Smith there. Going on the outset of turn three, he doesn't make it stick, however. Beryl Smith stays there in P5. Just to follow up on the point about Boss Lob, he started last season as an amateur, was doing so well, they said, wait a minute, he got the mid-season promotion, got put up into the pros. And right now, of those top eight that are running up front, we don't see many amateurs up there, but we have uh, Smith and Ostrel, then Ostrel both running up there. And if you look a little bit behind them, just, just really quickly to the to the battle for P9, there we see four pro drivers, Jason Cooper, Marco Derricks, Nick Thiessen, and Tom Ratje. They're actually pretty close at the moment, staying, uh, staying close together. Tom is a little bit further behind yep. Nick at the moment, but I think he's close enough to stay in the draft, and just uh, as we saw in the top eight battle. They're driving together, um, currently in P13 is Adam McNally, and I think that if these four drivers stay with each other, they can create a gap to P13 and further down and make sure that no matter what happens, if they don't crash, they finish at least P12 today. Well, if I'm Lauren... If I'm Lauren Murray there, as we look at that at an 11th position, I try to stay on the back of McNally because he is quick and coming. That interval from Ratchy back to McNally, about three seconds. So that's something we can keep an eye on. Really clean racing so far, Johan. A few bumps, a few little taps from the rear, but pretty much everybody's still out there racing. We've only lost one driver. Franz Janssen was only able to put in about seven laps. As I say Ooh. that, Lauren Murray goes off. Yeah, Lauren Murray, we just were talking about him, that he should stay in the draft of Adam McNally. And unfortunately, in turn three, as we're going into a replay, um, yeah, we see him out there going towards the corner. And I think he just maybe braked a little bit too late, but at least he got loose around the apex, just turned his car around. As we saw, said at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the broadcast, in the, in the track description, the walls are very far away and you have a lot of run of space. So Lorne did not hit the wall. But man, that must hurt because he was 14th. He was doing very well so far, being able to stick close to Adam and uh, making a move there. It didn't happen. We do have a pitter at the moment. Is Beryl Smith, Beryl? Okay, he's the first to leave the train. Now, this is interesting. I got to worry... He did have an accident though. This was not a voluntary pit stop. He went wide going out of the carousel and basically 
Ah, he went right into the carousel, jumped over the hill and, well, went in what we call Oblivion, which is the area <laughs> outside of the hills in Summit Point where there's no catch fencing for the cars and you get transported. It's free transportation to the pits, which do cost you a lot of, uh, a lot of tow time. Uh, so the amateur driver gets bit. So the front train that was once, once 10, got down to eight and now it's down to seven as we have lost Anwar Burrell Smith. And one thing to mention with that, Bill, it was the leader of the amateur championship. So there will be a huge boom for those other amateur drivers out there who are willing to fight for the championship against Burrell Smith, who is having like his second bad race of the season and can make up a lot of position on the driver today. Yeah, he has one, one great race and one bad race. We apologize as we lose picture. Johan and I are going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're going to do this radio style. Right well, now, the leaders are working lap number 14, Johan. Uh, as we're doing it radio style, Gene Fittis is etching ever so closely to Ironome. Ironome is still behind uh, Artem Kurowski for P1. Gene Fittis got really close to try and move there, but he uh, chose to stay a little bit behind him. Richard Wirth behind Gene Fittis is etching closer as well. He's only a few tenths away from Gene Fittis right there. It's really a four-car battle there with Stephen van Opstal, Marcelo Pagnan, and Bastelop seemingly a little bit slower, but still catching on and holding on to that oh-so-important draft out there. We have our first biter for a legitimate pit stop, and it's the Bay State Hammer, Tom Ratchie. He comes in. He was racing just outside of that front train, remember? About in, I'd say, ninth or 10th position. He comes in, makes that stop. A nice 14-second stop. Everything looks good for him. Now, just a little mention to Arjan Schepers. He's currently the driver in P20 uh, for the fans out there. He just put an overtaking maneuver on Trip Smith. A good overtaking maneuver going into turn one. Uh, past him on the inside. Clean and a, a beautiful overtake, to be honest. He's right now trying to battle his way further forward into the top 20. The leaders come around the final corner one more time. It is still the Ukrainian Artem Koralski working lap number 15 now. The top seven drivers still remain within striking distance, part of the train. After Boss Slob in seventh, it's about seven and a half seconds back to Jason Cooper and Nick Thyssen. They race for eighth position. They are teamed up together. And one thing that we just saw, we had the second lead, uh, the second group driving, with including Marco Derricks. Marco Derricks is currently in for his pit stop. He takes two left-hand tires and some fuel. He's currently out, uh, out of the pits. Now I'm curious to see where uh, Beryl Smith or Beryl Smith. He was, uh, he is probably our lead driver who already made a pit stop. He's well, really no, I track. think that that toe probably cost him way too much time, as he's he's well down now. I believe it is Tom Ratchie who did that early stop, who's still out there. Ratchie racing in 17th position. I got off a lap, yeah. I, I saw the other way around. No, you're absolutely right. Tom Ratchie is currently in 17th, and he overtook Marco Derricks with his pit stop. So that undercut has worked in Tom's favor. Uh, Tom is currently just in front of Max Wright. And that actually might not help him, because Max Wright will give a little bit of draft to Marco. And that might make uh, make sure that Marco catches up to Tom a little bit quicker than he wants to. And we got our picture back for you as we're looking at Max Wright racing in 18th position. And right behind him, Tom, or just ahead of him, is Tom Ratchy. Let's look at the cars that are trying to catch back up in the train. My goodness, side by side, it's Cooper with Nick Thiessen last to break into corner number one. Thiessen gets that position. Yeah, good overtake. He had a, a better run out of the last corner, swung it to the inside, and uh, not a lot that, that, that Jason could have done there. But Jason is going to do something there in turn three. Has a better run out of turn one, tries it on the inside, but Nick carries a little bit more momentum. He has to cut the corner, though, a little bit, going through the gravel. It doesn't stop him, though. He's uh, he's quicker through there, carries the momentum to uh, to turn five yards to the corner, and he overtakes him for P8. Let's go ahead and... We'll look at the replay of this pass as uh, Thyssen does it down the straight. He got to the inside. If we look from above, you can see the, all the foliage here at some point. They're side by side. And now this is in the yeah, this is in a in the wagon bend there as they go through that that left hander. 
Uh, as we see the replay, uh, an important driver is going into the pits. Gene Fiddis is opting out, out of that lead pack, probably thinking like, I am a little bit quicker all alone. I'm going to put some new tires on this Oh, he overshoots his pit stop. Well, that's surely not going to help. That's not going to help. He, you can see that he's going up on the left side there. He's going to probably, that's all he's going to take. We believe the two tires, Johan, are free while they're putting in the fuel. If you take four, you got to wait for him. Exactly. So I, I doubt that drivers will actually go for four tires. Now, I have to say, Bill, Jim seemed to catch up to that mistake quite quickly. He immediately put it in the first, and I've seen drivers lose, see, uh, see them lose way more time by overshooting the pit box. So I think that Gene Fitters might actually be at the back of that lead battle that, uh, that we saw before. So if that actually happens like that, you won't lose too much time. But this is surely not what you want if you're fighting for the victory. Just in comparison, he was about a second and a half longer than Tom Ratchy was in his box, but about three seconds longer cone to cone. So that shows you how much time you lost. And with the with the competition being so close, three seconds, that eh, could be three miles. Yeah, especially, and I'm really curious now to see his lap times because you have the top battle, the, those, those six drivers currently with Artem Korolski on top. They are driving really quick and that's probably because Artem is showing tremendous pace and the rest of the drivers are able to stay in his draft and enjoy those really good lap times. Now, will Gene be able to drive equal, comparable lap times as to the people in front? I don't know, but we see Richard Wirth being on the huge pressure of Stephen van Opstal, trying it on the inside and then going on the outside as Richard defends it there. Richard breaks a little bit later, parks his car on the apex, and if he gets a good run here, he should be safe until turn three, Bill. Worth in third. Look at Van Opsel trying to get in there. He's coming in now. They're coming up to the left-hander. Van Opsel in his Pokemon Go machine decides to back out. Almost backs up into Marcelo Pajan, the Italian driver, as they start to accordion. Now, that was good of Stefan Opstal. He tried to take a little peek on the inside of Richie there. He could have kept the car side by side, but that's just a recipe for disaster there. It was better what he did, just let the, par, uh, let the car in front get his uh, momentum back, just slot in behind him and go single foul, foul through the turn three corner. He saves a lot more time that way and stays in front of Marcelo Pagan. I can, just, I can just update you on a few things. As we can stay on this battle with traffic coming up, I can report that that Adam McNally is about a second is about a second and a half behind Nick Thiessen. Remember McNally, somebody we were watching, and also that uh, Fittis was able to get out well in front of Tom Ratchy. Fittis is now the leaders of all the cars who have pitted, although he did lose a lot of time looking for his box. Yeah, and as we see those two drivers in front, there's lap traffic uh, or tra traffic that's about to be lap. One of those drivers is, is Burl Smith. Uh, Beryl Smith is not the red car of uh, Trip Smith, who's letting everybody pass. But uh, Anthony Beryl Smith, after his yeah mistake, after his unfortunate uh, oblivion moment, being sent back to the pits, he has fought his way back to P22 currently. we will be curious to see how far further he can move himself up the field. All those points are important because remember he's in that championship for the amateur crown. McNally has finally come into pit. Remember, he was really fast, so all those positions he's picked up, he's going to lose, but now he comes out, and he's going to cycle out in about 16th spot. Let's look at it right now. As they start to go around, you watch the winner. There goes Arjun Shepherds around him, Robert Belinga, and Jason Cooper. That's a nice little, that's a nice little battle for 16th. That's great for those guys. Bad news for Adam McNally, because he's going to be faster than all those guys. Absolutely, and especially with the carousel section to come, there's another place where you easily get by so many cars, so you will certainly lose a little bit of time. Now, another driver we have talked about a lot during this race so far is Gene Fittis. Gene Fittis just went by Kip Stevens. Now, I've been taking a look at Gene's lap times while we see Richard Wirth going into the pits. And all the, they're all oh. coming in. It's a pit party. Kurowski, Numb, Wirth, Pajan, all coming in. Everybody took tires, we think. Nums keeps his car flat. Kurowski is first out, which is surprising considering that he was doing all the work. He should have been burning the most fuel. Yeah, maybe he's just a, a light-footed driver who doesn't use a lot of petrol anyway. Steven van Opstel and Bas Slop are still driving, though. We currently have two people driving for the driving and battling for the lead. Uh, I want to take a look at Gene Fittis. He is currently... 
uh, one second, I would say, yeah. behind Marcelo Pagnan. So he is actually able, I guess, to catch up back to the draft of Marcelo and, and reinstate himself in that battle for the lead. Now, if we look at Eero, Eero has lost a lot of time build to, to Artem. Look at that. It's almost one, one and a half second there that the Estonian driver is stringing the Ukrainian driver. I don't know what Artem did in that pit stop. Maybe he miscalculated some fuel, but this is a tremendous gap that he's currently having especially if you keep in mind that he has been leading the lead back the whole race so far well looking at the times they are almost identical they are very close to what num and well, well that's between num and worth let me see Kurowski pretty much the same all the leaders pretty much in and out the same now here comes slavin van Ostrel coming in yep and let's go to uh, I'm sorry, is this more more bark than bite? And that was a little bump from Robert Valinga. Back, let's quickly go to McNally. This I got a bad feeling here. This is McNally trying to get around while the other while our leaders come in. Ah, McNally just remember he's Johanny came out behind these guys. He's still behind these guys. I'm so sorry, Bill. Let's look at, take a look at Buslop. Yep. Buslop is still on the pit stop. I f don't know what went wrong with him, but he was uh, going forward, reversing, going forward, reversing. I don't think his pit crew started refueling his car or something like that. Uh, he has lost a lot of time. He was the training car in that eight car lead back. Yep. And it looks like he has lost over 10 seconds to them. So that's a disastrous st uh, stop there for Buslop, who has been thrown down the order. Everybody but two drivers have made their pits. We're waiting for Kip Stevens and Raul Gauz to come in. Stevens right now racing in sixth, right up there with the leaders, actually. Enjoy while it lasts. Raul Gauz in eighth. Yeah, one thing that I currently look at is Stefan from Opstal. He's currently in P6, uh, as you saw, uh, set up behind Kip Stevens. Now, Stefan was one of the two drivers who opted to not take a pit stop when everyone else was doing so and he's probably regretting that being two seconds almost uh, uh yeah two seconds behind gene fittis uh he surely has lost touch with the lead back there but right now this is all going on behind the rookie who is 2.2 seconds ahead of the driver in second which is errol num and we're talking about the ukrainian artem Kowalski. You know, Iro Nome is probably one of the quickest drivers I ever had the pleasure of racing against. Uh, he's really quick and really intelligent. Last lap around, he was slightly quicker than Artem Kurowski. Now, he currently doesn't have the draft, being over two seconds back. I think that if he can close the gap to one and a half seconds, something like that, he can use that toe again to, to really close the gap to the leading driver. While he goes a little bit wide there to turn free, getting a little bit extra momentum. The big factor, though, are the two drivers behind him, Richard Wirth and Marcelo Pagnan, because how much do those drivers want to work together? That gap of two seconds, over two seconds, Bill, that's not close in a few laps. So Richard and Marcelo really have to hold themselves to not attack Eero uh, if they want to be able to close that gap. But they also might say, no, we don't care about your chance maybe for P1. We want P2 and we're going to attack you now. Yeah, well, actually, the last time around, Worth did take a peek at Arrow going into corner number one, and I think it slowed him down a little bit. Right now, Numb trying to get a little bit of a gap, and he's, he's starting to get it there on Worth. Yeah, it seemed like he had a, a good lap time last time around. Let's see what the gap is when they go over start finish line. Look at Pajan now as they race side by side for third position. Worth has to take a defensive line. Now he pulls out in front. Aerodome gained around two tenths on Arthur sure Kowalski. Well, with nine laps to go. Uh, oh, Aero goes wide! Uh -oh. oh no, he pushed too hard. And there goes all your work. He drops down to behind Richard Wirth uh, in P4. And even Gene Fittis is right on the still now. This is great news for Artem Kowalski, who's, well, really edging himself out for the rest of the field now. We'll go on board with this one as we watch a rare... This is like a solar eclipse here when you see Aeronaut make a mistake. I mean, this is like a solar eclipse in a blood moon at the same time. This barely happens, but Aeronaut just in his in his mindset to, to catch up as soon as possible to Art and makes a mistake, goes a little bit wide there, and you can see how much that hurt distraction and how far he falls down immediately. Well, so go ahead. Now those four cars are together. Worth, Pajan, Numb, and Fittis. 
still oh, waiting for oh. Kip Stevens. We have some business to do as soon as Kip decides to come in. Kip out there racing in seventh. Now he comes in. We'll wait for that to sort out a little bit before we do our our uh, Trip Smith back marker shout out. Oh, Steven. Oh, Kip. I'm not sure what. I guess he's in the box and they're doing service. That's one way to do it. I think he's going to have to reverse to get going. Let's stay on this a minute because it is entertaining. Yep, he's got to go backwards before he can go forwards. One of the most interesting bit ex uh, entrances I've ever seen there, Bill. Uh, interesting tactic. Now, a little bit further up the field, uh, Richard Worth is currently in P3, being overtaken by Marcelo Pagnon last time around. Now, those drivers have a 2.8 deficit to Artem Kurowski. Last time around, when Eero was still P2 and he didn't make a mistake yet, it was 1.9. So that second group has lost almost a second to Artem there. I don't think, Bill, that if Eero isn't leading that pack, they are going to close it to the Ukrainian driver. All right, Johan, I'm going to pay some bills. Give a yell, though, if something exciting happens. We'll cut away from this. When you pay to sponsor a segment, you get to go first. And that's what's going to happen right now on this, as what we're going to call this segment as soon as the graphic comes up trips back marker shout out and we're going to start with trip smith he is notorious for sponsoring practice sessions after practice sessions right now he's currently the last car on the lead lap we got another smith in front of him about 16 seconds up no relation as it's anwar burrell smith he's the leader in the amateurs coming into this one probably will not be coming out after he visited the twilight zone Arnaz Sheppers in 21st position. Just in front of him, Lauren Murray in 20th. These guys have been together as they continue to follow Raul Guz, who is in 19th spot. He's got about one second to get up to Boss Slob. Slob, remember, was racing with the big boys, then had some issues. He's fallen all the way back to 18th. Quickly, let's move up. Oh, let me correct myself as we move up to Max. Oh, Max Wright is who I missed. Now we go up to Boslav. Let's keep going. We'll go up to Kip Stevens. We saw that unique pit strategy from him. He cycles out in 16th position. Up a little more to Yup Bill Yup the Loop Billmanson in a battle with Robert Witte for 14th. That'll do it for Trips back marker shout out. And while you were looking at the back markers, I took a look at the leading pair, or at least the second leading group out in front. Marcelo Panlan is still in P2, but he is now being chased by Ironome. Ironome overtook Richard Wirth last time around, so now that cost uh, Richard a lot of uh, momentum coming out of turn one. He was almost overtaken as well by Gene Fittis, but he managed to, to fend that driver off going into turn three. Uh, it seems like Gene Fittis has a good run though in the last corner, edging ever so closely to Richard there. He's not making a move yet. Remember, with Sonny Kanchen not here today, there is the no-show compensation that Kanchen will be rewarded. So what Num is doing right now, every position he gets could be the, you know, if he can get around Pajan, that could be the position that wins him the championship when we get to the finale. Exactly. Like we mentioned before, Bill, consistency will be so important because... It's good that those drivers have those compensation races, but it's way better to just have a good finishing position. Now, Aeronome is doing that for himself in P3 at the moment, if Sonny Kenshin isn't here. But if he is, surely looks like he has the speed to get his third second place of the season. Stay on this battle. Just want to update you verbally that McNally was finally able to get around some of those drivers he was racing with. He's up to 13th. Having a good run. Up 12 positions, I believe. He's our hard charger somebody to watch if he could just get himself a good qualifying time next round look for a top five maybe or maybe even the win from adam you know surely be a, a driver to beat them as we go to Ironome, who has a good exit there going a little bit wide but it doesn't seem to hurt his momentum coming out of the last corner he's really hooked up into the draft of Marcelo Pagnon. Now I'm looking a little bit at the deficit between Artem and Marcelo. I see that it has increased by two tenths for the last two laps. I think Artem is going for the victory, but it doesn't mean that the battle for P2 isn't exciting as Ironom tries it around the outside of the Italian though, has a good run on the exit there, keeping it side by side and now he has track position for turn three, Bill. Bajan took that defensive line into one, Num said, okay, I think I can get the momentum. And by the time they get to three, Wagon Ben, he gets it done. This was where Num had trouble last time, but he's okay. Look at the run now from back. This is money worth. Here comes Richard. He tried it, but he didn't finish it. 
yeah, there was no room with, with Numb up there blocking the lane that he had to go. Boy, these four cars race under a blanket. Numb, Bajan, Worth, and Fittis. I don't know if we missed it, but I, when I'm looking at Pang Yang, he seems to have been having a little bit of damage on his rear bumper. It might be that he has been uh, hit on the butt uh, a little bit early in the race. I don't think it will hurt him that much if he stays in this group, though. But it might hurt his speed when he's all out alone or in front of the pack. He is now having a good tight run through the last corner. Edging a little bit closer to, to Iro Noh, who immediately goes on the defensive, immediately goes all the way to the inside. He probably knows what time it is because he saw himself a little bit away from the apex there. Marcelo Pagnon gets a better run going to turn one, but he's not able to put his car side by side with the Estonian group. Nope, Errol took that inside line, held it until he knew that nobody was going to attack him, and then he perfectly, legally came across and took a nice entrance into one. Those far four cars battle for second position. They are four seconds behind Kurowski, unless the Ukrainian runs out of fuel. Remember, his his pit stop was fast. He, he has smoked these guys in pit lane, even though the numbers don't show it. Oh, and remember we talked about a little, uh, little passionate love kiss that was going on earlier? Well, you can see right now the two cars that were involved with that one, as you can look at the damage off of the back of uh, Richard Wirth. On the, on the front of Richard Wirth, off the back of Bajan. Now going a little bit further down the field, uh, if the people that are cheering for Ion Schepers are currently looking for their driver on track, he unfortunately had an accident uh, out of turn three. He went a little bit wide last lap around. He was just being overtaken by Beryl Smith, who's currently in P21. He went loose and he couldn't save his car on time. And he actually hit the wall, has severe damage, and is currently sitting in the pits. Well, Kurowski is gone. Kurowski has, he's in the pits right now. Did he have an internet connection? I believe so. He's blinking for me. Extremely blinking for me. He seems to be back on track, however, but it looks like I'm looking at a low rider on my screen. His car bounces up and down so much. Yeah, I'm watching. He was, he is back out on track. He lost connection. He did not have an incident, and I believe it. I believe it took him to the pit lane. Artem Kurowski received throughout fell to an acceptable level. He has internet problems and that's hard break for the Ukrainian driver who was superb out there today. He didn't only have the speed, but he was great with his strategy and to see it end like this, that's, that's really hard to swallow there. I can hear Sonny catch it right now saying, I can't believe it as now Errol Num back up into the top position. Poor Kurowski, man, what a tough break. That's racing. That is racing, exactly, Bill. And you can say that about Sonny Kenshin, who's thinking, like, why does this happen to me? That's exactly true. But remember that the race isn't over. Marcelo Pagna isn't that far away from Ira Nome. And if Ira Nome, who has made a mistake before this race, makes one more mistake like that, Marcelo might actually be the one holding up the big trophy at the end of the race. Look at them go side by side. That's Worth on the inside, the man with the momentum on the outside is the New Zealand driver. God, he cannot get it done, Gene Fittis. And Gene is trying to cut back there, going to the outside of turn three. Doesn't make that work, but now he has more momentum going to the inside towards turn three. But chooses not to put the car side by side there. Probably the smarter move and uh, try it again a little bit later during the race. Coming up on some lap traffic, racing in 24th position, Bjorn de Forsch. Oh, he finds a spot. He lets one, two by, three, and gets on the brakes four by. That was a hairy moment for uh, for Iro Noam probably because Bjorn really tried to get out of the way of the other drivers there, and he was breaking through the little kink before yard sale corner. Now that's not a corner where you normally break, I think, in the MX5. So that might have caught Iro a little bit off guard. Everything went well though, and Iro is still in front of Marcelo Pagnan. But Marcelo Pagnan had a great carousel section. Look at him. Iro has to go on the defensive in the last corner. Now that's not something you see a lot. Iro is putting his two wheels in the grass on breaking there and that doesn't help as you can see Marcelo is really having a good run so far this is it with only one lap to go this is the move for the lead Marcelo going on the outside while Eros stays on the inside Bill this will be his only attempt at the best passing zone on the track before the race is done they are on the white flag lap 
Numb on the inside, protecting that line. Momentum from the top side, from the Italian driver. Jean gets a great drive off of two. And now he'll be, in, he'll be in the preferred position, Johan, when they get here to this left-hander. He went a little bit loose on the exit of turn one there. And that cost him so much traction that Marcelo was able to power through there. He cuts, I think the whole turn three corner is turned into a straight right there, but that makes sure that Marcelo stays in front of the Estonian driver with only two heavy braking zones left. He stays in front, defending the inside there to Eero No, There's no opportunity here to go through the carousel corner. So Eero really has to set himself up for a try, a do or die move in the last corner. But that's not a position where it's really easy to overtake Bill. We talked about how far that start finish line is down the racetrack out of the final corner. But we have not seen anybody get side by side there this entire race. By the time they get side by side, it's usually almost all the way down into corner number one. We're going to find out right now. This is the final corner. Num needs a great run off of here and a great run to the start finish line. He's about a half car length back. Here he comes. He's closing. But the start finish line is also coming up. Give round number three to the Italian driver. Marcella Pajot picks up his first win. Beautiful defensive there from Marcelo Pagnan. He knew that if he was just on the, on the, on the racing line, Aeronome had no chance to pass him. Really good drive and really good overtaking maneuver in the last lap from him. Richard Ware finishing a P3 just in front of Gene Fittes. Now, you were talking under a blanket earlier. All four drivers in the top four within half a tenth. Let's go ahead before we ride. Let's go to 15th position. Let's look at Yup Wilmanson in a battle here with Robert Witte. Witty with a good run off of the final corner. Boy, he has a better run than, than Errol Num had on Pajan right now as they battle for this 15th position. Nope, not going to get there. Let's get Vilmanson 15th. Witty has to settle for 16th. The rest, rest of the cars coming around on the lead lap. I don't think there's a battle anywhere. My goodness, Marcelo Pajan. We talked about it how many races before he would get his first win. We talked about it during the break. And Marcello gets one now. Congratulations for his first career win in the MX5 World Tour. We're going to take a short break, but don't go far. We'll be back to run down the entire finishing order, talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on the gate. Back in a few.
Welcome back to the Paul Newman Memorial from Summit Point. Round number three of the Hoisingfeld MX-5 World Tour brought to you right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Well, try as he might to get a win, Errol Numb cannot as he has to settle for his third second place finish of the season. But here's a guy who has been trying for 23 races to get a win. It is Marcelo Pajan, the Italian driver, picks up his first career win in his 24th tour try. Rounding out the podium was Richard Wirth. Gene Fittis takes fourth and fifth place goes to Steven Van Ostro. The back half of your top 10 goes to Nick Thiessen, Marco Dirks, Jason Cooper, Robert Walinga, and the Sheriff, Jordi Fike, gets 10th. Now in P11 is the pro driver, Tom Ratchie. He finished in front of Adam McNally. Adam McNally, who had a great recovering drive, not being able to set a qualifying time, he made up 13 positions, finishing in P12. Bas Slop had uh, problems in the pit lane, and that actually sent him back quite quite a bit uh, down the field, uh, battling for P8, but finishing in P13 in front of Kip Stevens. Joop Willemsen gained five positions to finish 15th in front of Robert Witte. Max Wright finished 17th in front of Beryl Smith. Beryl Smith, who of course had that, uh, that off moment coming out of the carousel, which uh, sent him back, but still made up quite a bit of positions after that happened. Roel Geuze finished in P19 in front of Lorne Murray, finishing out the top 20, Bill. Then we get back to the drivers that had a little bit more trouble. Tris Smith does manage to stay one lap down. Then we get to, oh, this is the sad part, Artem Kurowski, the Ukrainian driver, led most of the way, had internet connections, cost him the win. He comes home in the double duck spot. Jorn DeForsch behind him, 24th and 25th go to Arjun Shepers and Jeroen Ursum, 26th, 27th, and 28th to Franz Janssen, Derek Holland, Peter Van Gool, and the last car, not sure if he actually gritted, Joe McDonald, I think he did. There's 29 drivers for you. Time for interviews, and let's see who we have available. You know, I've interviewed Errol Numb a bunch of times. Johan has raced against him a bunch of times. Let's switch it up a bit, and let's let my partner talk to uh, Errol Numb here today. Errol Numb, finally we talked to each other from the other side of the booth. Um, you had a great race out there, battling all the time uh, with, with a, a top eight group. I was wondering, in that first part of the race, Eero, what was exactly your plan? Because you were you were quite happy, it seemed like, to drive behind Artem for a while. Was that basically your plan to save a little bit of fuel behind that driver? Yeah, that was the plan, uh, especially because the fuel needed was uh, smaller than the tires, so you can't make up in the speed stop with new tires so the only way is to save fuel to keep up with the elite pack exactly now after the pit stop you had quite a bit of a, a gap to artem do you have any idea what happened because you were basically side by side going into the pit lane did you have a, a slightly bad pit stop or did artem just had the luck of the draw and had a really quick one uh there is two things uh Artyom, what his name was, didn't take enough fuel, so he had a shorter pit stop and I forgot to change the first gear, so the second gear didn't want to go. I see, so a small mistake because of that. Well, after that, the battle really heated up. You were right in there with Marcelo, with Richard, with Jean. Um, in the end, Marcelo just got you. Can, can you tell us a little bit about your point of view from that last battle? How did you approach that? Uh, I made a little mistake, a few corners from the end of the lap, going to the last lap. So he was able to get very close. I tried to slow down for the last turn, so he couldn't get a bigger run, but still it was side by side and maybe a break too early in the first corner, but I didn't want to run him out. So yeah, it was just very close. Yeah, very close indeed. Well, Iro, you finished three times in p2 so far uh, the next race will be in virginia is that a track that that really is, is is good to your liking is that a track where you think that you can make the difference and, and get that first win of the season i uh, maybe i i won before in virginia in few few uh, leagues in the mx5 so and uh, last time in mwt too so it should suit me very good. Well, it was good seeing you battle out there, Eero. It was surely exciting to watch. Thank you for talking with us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yes, yeah. Eero Numb, your second place finisher today. You know, according to Eero, that uh, uh, 
the guy he was chasing, Kurowski, might have been running out of fuel anyway. So maybe if the internet uh, wasn't as costly as it as it was. It might have just been uh, the damage that happened before the other one. Let's go ahead and talk to our third place finisher, Richard Worth. Richard, you feel like you're starting to get the feel of this one? Boy, this was a good run. Waiting for Richard. We don't have a copy yet. We'll leave Richard here. Maybe he can get his mic working. We'll take this opportunity. Let's bring in the surprise driver of the season so far, and that is the Kiwi, Gene Fittis. Gene, congratulations. Another good finish. Oh, thanks, Soup. How are you going? You were racing up there. I got a little worried, though, after the pit stop. I looked like you might be out of the mix. Yeah, I was a bit mixed emotions for this race, to be honest. Um, I was... Had the plan to try and uh, maybe jump Aero and or Artem with uh, pitting early, but I actually missed my box, and then I took uh, about five laps extra fuel than I needed, and uh, that ended up making me come out behind a couple of the uh, the cars further down the field, which took me a little bit of time to get past, so ended up losing a couple of spots to uh, Richard and Marcello, but um, luckily I was able to, to get back on the back of that train and, um, and end up fighting for the... Uh, for a, for a podium, but um, I have to say, uh, really tough going for Artem to drop out like that. He was uh, well, about five seconds up the road from us, and yeah, it feel really bad for him. It looked like he had you guys' number the whole time. He was not only out in front, but he was running fast. Let's drill down a little bit on the pit stop uh, uh, mistake. Is that just a, a math issue, or was it just a technical problem of not pushing the button at the right time? Yeah, just... Um, to be honest, I think it just flustered me a little bit after I missed my box and having to hit reverse and get back in the right spot to start it fueling. And uh, then I just lost track of my number and yeah, hit the button way too late. Well, nevertheless, you came home third. You had your nose in there for a little bit. You were you were challenging to get up front. Not a lot of room here at some point to make a move if you're if you're not uh, right behind the guy you want to pass. No, that's exactly right. And uh, as I was saying to. Um, to Jake last round, um, it's going for consistency this season. Like another fourth place, I think I've got tonight. Um, that's perfectly fine for me for this this uh, stage of the season. So we'll just carry on racking up some points and see how things pan out towards the end. It's great to see you finish those races and do well. Congratulations! <laughs> I'm I'm really happy for you, man. I really <laughs> I, I really am. It's finally happening. So yeah. uh, good luck, and we'll we'll see you down the road. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sue. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Gene Fittis has always been fast, but has always had a problem of, well, must finish Fittis. I think we can maybe lose that nickname pretty soon. Let's get one more shot. I'll let Johan. I think uh, I think uh, Richard Worth has his mic working now. Johan? Hey, Richard. I, I've been looking at your, your results so far. You finished uh, 13th. You finished 8th. You finished 3rd. I think the next step is winning a race. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, thanks, Johan. Yeah, uh Possibly today, but yeah, for sure, I'm looking for a win for this season. Absolutely. Well, you surely did your best out there. We, we could really see it. Now, I'm, I'm wondering a little bit about your tactic. We, we talked about Eero, who, who in that first sense really tried to fall back a little bit behind Artem to save a little bit of fuel. What was your strategy attacking this race, especially in that first stint? Did you try to fight your way forward as soon as possible to have that track position? Or did you kind of think like, it's okay if I stay a little bit behind and save as much fuel as possible? I was taking it a little bit easy for the first stint before the pit stops, but then after that, I was definitely looking for, you know, track position and thinking about the race finish. Yeah, and especially after that track position, as you say, you had a really good battle at the end with Ira Noam. Gene, tell us a little bit about that. How, how was it from your point of view? Well, it was a little bit hectic because it was like the guy in front was getting a draft from the guy in front. And the one behind was drafting me. Gene was getting a hell of a draft off me. Unreal. Um, yeah, it was tight. Hard to get the next position because he was so close to the next man. Um, and for any little mistake. 
that yeah, the every, every little mistake surely has an effect. Now, one thing I'm I'm curious about. One of the things that is unique to this championship is like the the, the incident limit. Hey, you don't have an incident limit where you get DQ'd, but you get points at the end based on how many incidents you've scored over the season. Um, I'm wondering how much do you think about that when you are out there fighting for that win? Is that something going through your mind, or are you basically treating that as something you just look at at the end of the race and you don't really pay any attention to when you're out there on track? Well, to the back of my mind, I do think about it, but the priority is getting the best position possible and then think about incident points. Fair enough. Well, you made up two positions out there today, uh, going from P5 on the grid to P3, getting that final podium sp position. Well done out there. Uh, thank you for talking with us, and I'll see you uh, next week or next time around in Virginia. That was Richard Worth, Bill. Having a good run. Boy, you can hear how excited he was to have that one. Let's get Richard out of here. Move him up there. Okay. Those interviews were brought to you as well as everything else on the SimSport News wrap-up show, courtesy of SimSport News. SimSport News is the first dedicated sim racing news website that covers all broadcasted series on iRacing. Ran by Jacob Toffs and Gianni Quintillier. the SimSport News race team competes on many official iRacing series, as well as the one you've just been watching. For more information, go to simsportsnews.com. Let's give some thanks to some other people. How about all the people at uh, the Quality Racing Syndicate? We'd like to thank them for organizing the MX-5 World Tour and contracting with GSRC to broadcast. And of course, our title sponsor, Hoisingveld. The affordable simulation software and hardware are thought to be of limited use for race teams and drivers, but their simulation solutions bring professional results within reach of any race team or driver without having to compromise on realism or engineering value. They offer a broad array of products and services such as advanced vehicle simulation and hardware. They are able to simulate any combination of racetrack, including a full-fledged cockpit environment with unparalleled realism. I gotta change the wording on this one. Unparalleled realism is impossible to say. You try it at home, say it three times, folks. Hoisingveld solutions are currently being used by professional teams and drivers in Formula Ford, GP3, GT2, and Formula One. Jake has no problem with that phrase, but I sure do. Now, these products are available for any professional team or driver looking for an edge in racing. Be a better race car driver. Get in touch today. And we would also like to extend our thanks to Title Influence and SimSport News. How about the companies and equipment and software and the music that we have here? The iconic original music that lets your ears alert your eyes. You're watching a GSIC broadcast comes courtesy of Eric Eckholm and Casey Lalonde. See the screen for how to contact each of them. I'm done. Go ahead, Johan. I'm going to try to say unparalleled realism for the next, uh, next weeks <laughs> while we're waiting for the next round of the Heusenfeld. MX5 World Tour when it returns for round four in two weeks, April 7th from Virginia International Raceway. GSRC will be there once again to bring you all the action. We hope you join us. Sliding across your screen now are some of the upcoming broadcasts. So check those out, mark them down in your calendar, subscribe to them on YouTube, whatever, but make sure you do not miss them. If you like more information about GSRC, including a complete list of future broadcasts, you can find them all on the website www.globalsimracingchannel.com. We're also on Twitter at GSR Channel and on Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel. And while you're here on Facebook, if you haven't done it yet, like I said, subscribe to us by simply hitting that red, li red little button on this YouTube channel. Finally, on behalf of the man whose voice you just heard, Johan Vanderbilt, our director Joe Peek, and our camera guru Dougie Beard, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. Man, my cheeks are hurting for smiling so much working up here, having a great race and a great partner to broadcast it with. So with that said, rest easy. Jake should be back soon. If you have, if you're, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track. Bye.